Hi, it's Katrina. From the mysterious key to the Philosopher's Stone to an entire civilization that suddenly vanished, here are nine discoveries that science can't explain. Number 9. Flexible Glass Flexible glass is still in development now, in 2020. But it looks like someone in Roman times already made it happen thousands of years ago. Glass that would bend and not break. Several ancient texts mention that there was a material known as flexible glass in ancient Rome, during the reign of Tiberius Caesar. Several writers from the 1st and 2nd centuries talk about a glass goblet that would not break. After the item fell to the floor and dented, its creator used a small hammer to work it back into shape. A different version is that the craftsman took it as a gift to the emperor, but instead he knocked the crystal goblet to the floor and damaged it, and the glassmaker repaired it in front of him. The emperor realized what kind of power this could bring, and possibly be even a danger to his reign. He tried to make it illegal and destroyed the inventor's workshop. The product was so impressive, Tiberius worried that it would depreciate the value of precious metals like gold, silver, and copper. In another version of the story, it is the craftsman himself who throws the glass to the floor with all of his strength in front of the emperor to show him how easily it could be repaired. Instead of a reward, he was then executed, taking his secret with him to the grave. No physical evidence of this glass has been found so far, but if it had existed in Roman times, how would it have been made? Maybe the glassmaker discovered boric acid, or borax, which can be found in nature and somehow found out about its strengthening properties. It was already used by goldsmiths and was imported from the Middle East. Boric acid can be found in the steam vents of the Tuscan Maremma, a coastal area of central western Italy north of Rome. Theoretically, it's possible that a glassmaker somehow discovered boric acid's strengthening properties. But what happened to the recipe? And is this story really true? It's impossible to know for sure unless more is found. Until then, it will remain the lost invention of the Romans. Number 8. Disc of Death In 1964, archaeologists digging near the base of the Teotihuacan Pyramid of the Sun discovered a slate disc featuring a morbid, grinning skull with a protruding red tongue surrounded by a halo. They took it to the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City, where it remains today. This morbid sculpture has been nicknamed the Disc of Death. What did this disc mean to the lost civilization of Teotihuacan? The halo surrounding the skull likely symbolizes the sunset and sunrise, which various Mesoamerican societies interpreted as the solar system's cyclical death and rebirth. Some researchers believe the item depicts Mitlantecutli, the Aztec god of the underworld, and one of many Mesoamerican deities associated with skulls. Mitlantecultí ruled over a four-year stage of the afterlife called Mitlán, which anyone who did not die either in battle or childbirth experienced. Mitlán had nine unpleasant levels where mortal souls endured things like rivers of blood, winds that cut like knives, and mountains that crashed together as the deceased passed between them. Those who reached level 9 met Mitlantecutli, who appears in artwork as a blood-covered skeleton wearing a necklace of human eyeballs with raised arms and a gaping mouth, swallowing falling stars from above. Archaeologists discovered the disc directly in front of the pyramid, suggesting that it may relate to sacrifices the Aztecs made to appease the gods while building the structure. Human and animal remains were found nearby, but the full story surrounding this creepy disc is unclear. Number 7. Vetuvan Coil The Vetuvan Coil is an ancient, unfinished Hindu cave temple in the southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu. Its name translates to both Heaven of the Sculptors and the Temple of the Slayer. Carved from a single granite rock between the 8th and 9th centuries, it's the Pandya dynasty's only surviving monolithic temple. The top portion, the only finished part, features 122 sculptures of gods, goddesses, and animals, including monkeys, lions, and Nandi the bull. There's also an entrance and main hall. According to one legend, a rivalry between a father and son pair, both sculptors, is to blame for the temple never being finished. The son said he would complete a nearby temple before his father finished building the Vetuvan coil. This was not a friendly competition. The son kept his word and his father killed him in a jealous rage, leaving the Shiva temple incomplete. Another story claims that a father wanted his son to learn the tricks of carving before starting the project. His son went to work anyway. His father caught him chiseling away and killed him in a rage. Either way, the son dies. The Vetuvan coil strongly resembles the Kailasa temple in the western state of Maharashtra, which is also a monolithic structure. 
Both were built facing east atop hills around the same time period and have very similar carvings. The Kailasa temple is much larger than the Batuvan coil, leading some people to theorize that the latter was a prototype for the bigger structure, despite the temples being commissioned by different dynasties. But their similarities and why the Vatuvan coil was never finished remain unexplained. And now for number six, but first it's shout out time. Big shout out to Zara Wickberg and Godwin Toju for their super nice comments. You guys make my day too. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join us. Number six, Hermetica. The Corpus Hermeticum, or the Hermetica, is a multi-volume literary work attributed to a mythical ancient Egyptian sage named Thoth whose wisdom transformed him into a god. These texts have been immensely important in the history of Western thought and deeply influenced the Greeks, and includes a lot about alchemy and the occult. This is some deep stuff. His name in Greek was Hermes Trismegistos, Hermes the thrice greatest, so great times three, and he was believed to be the inventor of writing and the patron of all written arts, hence why the texts are known as Hermetica or the Hermetic Writings. Now, only fragments of the original text survive, and they represent a hodgepodge of mystical and spiritual traditions influenced by Kabbalah, ancient Jewish mysticism, Neoplatonism, a philosophical school of thought that originated in the Greco-Roman world of late antiquity, and Christianity. Legend claims that Hermes Trismegistus wrote the Hermetica on papyrus and stored it in one of Alexandria's great libraries, which burned down. Most of the Hermetic books were lost in the fire. Someone supposedly buried the surviving fragments at a secret desert location only select initiates knew about. Scholars have hotly debated the Hermetica's age and authorship since the Renaissance, and possibly earlier. French classical scholar and theologian Isaac Calcibon claimed that it did not have Egyptian roots, and that early Christians or semi-Christians wrote it. Who was Hermes, and did he really exist? It's possible or even likely that numerous authors created the works under the pseudonym Hermes Trismegistus, but these texts are so old they will most likely remain a mystery. Number 5. Vitrified Forts Scotland is full of stories and legends, but one mystery has puzzled historians for over 200 years. In the 18th century, an official survey in the Scottish Highlands uncovered an ancient Iron Age fortress. While this is already interesting, it turns out that this fort was made of stones that had somehow fused together. Known as Dune Deerdale, it was built by Iron Age people around 500 BC, when in theory humans lacked the technology to heat stone walls to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. This heat caused partial melting of the stonework, which later turned to glass or recrystallized in a process known as vitrification. Initially, after the discovery, many people said that there was no way that this was real, or maybe it was built on the remains of an ancient volcano. But there are actually many more forts like this, not only in Scotland, but in Europe. Dundeerdale is just one of 70 vitrified forts in Scotland and 200 vitrified forts throughout Europe. Conspiracy theorists suggested that an ancient superweapon we don't know about yet must have melted the stones. Scientists thought for a long time that some sort of destructive activity, like warfare, melted the rocks, but there was no evidence as to how. A 1937 experiment fueled this misguided belief when archaeologists set a model fort ablaze and its walls collapsed. They mistakenly concluded that people used vitrification for destabilizing structures. Another flawed experiment in 1980 perpetuated this inaccuracy. The lead researcher, archaeologist Ian Ralston, even speculated that ancient armies had pyrotechnics experts. But the methods that led to these conclusions were questionable, and researchers used arguably inconclusive results as sufficient data for proving their hypotheses. This is why the scientific method is important, kids! Some researchers speculated that the vitrification was some sort of ritual. Surprise, surprise, it took three volcanologists to finally help solve the mystery in 2016, courtesy of their ability to conduct extremely high temperature experiments in facilities that are off limits to archaeologists. They placed some rock samples in a box furnace mimicking Iron Age technology. The scorching heat weakened individual stones, but strengthened the overall structure by turning the mortar holding the rocks together into a dense, glass-like substance. Simply put, it turns out that we underestimated these Iron Age people's engineering capabilities, so much so that more experiments are necessary to fully understand their vitrification practices and how and why they would do this all over Europe. Number 4. Wolf's Egg Iron 
Also called the Salzburg Cube, the Wolfsegg Iron is a small, cube-shaped iron mass that was found buried in Wolfsegg am Hausruck, Austria in 1885. It weighs roughly 28 ounces and measures 2.6 by 2.6 by 1.85 inches. The object has four flattish sides and two convex sides that are opposite one another, as well as a deep groove all the way around it. It was covered in a thin layer of rust. By all appearances, the wolf's egg iron seems man-made, or perhaps even machine-made, but a miner at the Braun Iron Foundry discovered it encased in a 20-million-year-old block of lignite, or brown coal. At first, scientists classified it as a fossilized meteorite. That would be cool! But subsequent analysis ultimately deemed that this was a misidentification. So what is it? The circumstances surrounding the discovery of the iron piece classify the item as an out-of-place artifact, which is a historical, archaeological, or paleontological item that is found in chronologically challenging conditions. It just doesn't fit in. The following year, mining engineer Adolf Gerlt told the Natural History Society of Bonn about the strange object. Today it resides at the Heimathaus Museum in Wachlebruck, Austria, where it remains concealed. The wolf's egg iron has not been tested using modern methods. It's possible that the artifact is a piece of mining equipment that somehow became embedded in the coal scene years prior to its rediscovery. Some false rumors have circulated about the wolf's egg iron, especially among paranormal circles. One fallacy is that the object vanished from the Salzburg Museum in 1910, but apparently the museum in Austria still has it. People have also erroneously described it as a perfectly machined steel cube. With so much misinformation circulating, who knows what to believe? Number 3. Emerald Tablet Also called the Smaragdine Tablet or the Tabula Smaragdina, the Emerald Tablet is said to be a part of the Hermetica and was supposedly written by the same man-turned-god Thoth, or Hermes Trismegistus. It is a tablet made of green stone said to contain the secrets of the universe. Legend goes that the tablet was found in a cave tomb under the statue of Hermes in Tiana. It is believed the god divided his knowledge into 42 plates of emerald, codifying the scientific principles ruling the universe. It may have been held in the Ark of the Covenant, or it may even come from Atlantis. The sacred secret? The magical starter substance known as the Philosopher's Stone to turn metal into gold. Medieval and Renaissance alchemy relied on the information copied from the Emerald Tablet, and Isaac Newton himself had a translation of it. Its first known appearance is in the Book of the Secret of Creation and the Art of Nature, an Arabic work written sometime between the 6th and 8th centuries. Some scholars believe this text is the original Emerald Tablet. The tablet's meaning is widely disputed. There are numerous interpretations of the work, which was first translated in the 12th century into Latin. One popular version describes the seven stages of alchemical transformation, but maybe none of the authors fully understood the text's hidden secrets and power. We don't know what happened to the original, and science is still having trouble understanding the meaning of this powerful text. And as you know, it seems the key to the Philosopher's Stone is still out there. Number 2. The Saqqara Bird Also called the Saqqara Glider, the Saqqara Bird is a small wooden figurine dating back to 200 BC. An archaeological expedition uncovered it in an Egyptian tomb in 1898. The 2,200-year-old object made from sycamore maple wood looks like a bird, but also bears an uncanny resemblance to an airplane, earning it the classification of an out-of-place artifact. It weighs just 1.41 ounces and measures 5.51 inches long with a 7.09-inch wingspan. The Saqqara glider has a hawk-like beak and eyes, suggesting that it represents the god Horus but it lacks feet and any semblance of feathers, although they may have been painted on at one time. Its tail is oddly square and upright, and is shaped properly for the horizontal stabilizer or tailplane of a modern aircraft, which it does not have. Researchers are divided on the possibility that the artifact once had a tailplane. To some, it seemed aerodynamically accurate, so they tested replicas with and without a tailplane. The initial test results were disappointing. At first, the glider was totally unstable. Best case scenario, it still performed poorly. Aerodynamics expert Simon Sanderson had better luck when he tested his replica in a simulated environment mimicking Egypt's airstreams and conditions. Even without a tailplane, his replica achieved four times its weight and lift. With the part added on, it flew even better. Some people see the glider as evidence that the ancient Egyptians understood aerodynamics, or that it was even a scale model of a real aircraft or glider. Others chalk the artifact's airplane-like dimensions up to coincidence. 
What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 1. Who were the Teotihuacanos? Scientists have long struggled to learn more about the little-known Mesoamerican culture that inhabited Teotihuacan, a pre-Aztec city located 30 miles northeast of Mexico City. The obscure society settled Teotihuacan as early as 400 BC and became a thriving metropolis around 100 AD when the rapidly growing population built the monuments, pyramids, canals, and sprawling streets the ancient site is famous for. At its peak, the population numbered as high as 200,000. In many ways, researchers can only speculate about who these sophisticated urban planners were, but thanks to recently discovered evidence, they are learning more about the Teotihuacanos, who likely practiced a similar religion to that of the Mayans, which centered around the celestial bodies and involved sacrificial rituals. We know that they raised poultry and grew an array of produce. Busy trade routes spanning as far as the Pacific coast and the Gulf of Mexico enabled them to exchange their goods with other societies for things like obsidian, cotton, and cacao. The population was diverse, with people coming from near and far to settle in the city. It was one of the Western Hemisphere's first melting pots, scholar Miguel Angel Torres told Smithsonian Magazine. Evidence of destroyed statues, fire, and other destruction indicates that the city ultimately succumbed to a force greater than itself perhaps a change in power, or a civil war. The Teotihuacanos abandoned the city around 750 AD, after living there for 700 years. It's unclear whether they were killed, returned to their ancestral lands, or joined neighboring societies. Nobody knows what their spoken language was like, how their priestly or ruling classes were structured, or what they even called the city. Teotihuacan likely remained empty until sometime during the 1300s, when the Aztecs discovered the centuries-old remains. Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe and if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. While you're at it, feel free to leave any video suggestions in the comments below. See you next time! Bye!